Hey guys, it's Sharon back with Little Britain Company and I have um, just a small Dollar Tree haul for you today. <laughs> big. It's big. It's very big. I have new lights. You all know I'm always messing with my lights, trying to find the right lights. Maybe somebody out there knows lighting and can help me with this horrible problem. Um, it is what it is. There we go. Like this is the far side of the moon or something. Um, so uh, yes, so I have some wonderful brand new things. Some things I've seen other people haul, but I had just never seen at our Dollar Tree. Some things that I've never seen. And I was super <laughs> excited uh, to pick them up and show them to you. Um, here's my quick story for the day. Uh, some of you who are subscribers, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because we have a lot of fun on the channel and I hope I bring you content that interests you. Um, but uh, if you've been watching for a while, you know that um, I work with a STEM group and we had a big competition coming up uh, and it was yesterday. So this was uh, 23 different schools for this STEM competition. Uh, the kids literally worked, all the students, um, for all the schools worked all year long uh, preparing for this. Um, Little Bert was actually part of the team. Um, they had to do builds and interviews and trifolds and um, there, there was a math section, there was a test, there was, uh, it, I mean, it was, it's, there's a lot of moving pieces to this. Um, it was all based on the book Divergent and, uh, and Veronica Roth, the author, actually uh, videotaped a, a, um, a little thing for the kids, which was, you know, this is only a tri-county thing. It was really amazing, wonderful. She was amazing. I, I, it was just really something. And it was, it was really something for the kids too. Um, so it was really special. Uh, and then, uh, anyway, so, um, the kids did really good. They, they tried very hard. They actually got first place in the interview section, which is not the final score, but they did first place in the interview. I was so proud of them. Um, and then we, they came in second, which was, <gasps> um, really amazing they came in second to our school number one um it was just fabulous it was absolutely fabulous i i'm so excited for them i'm so excited for what they did they were they were so excited they were texting and calling literally everyone they knew who was available like their parents or their grandparents anyway everybody else so um super great news really exciting they did such a good job uh, the team that won uh Unfortunately, we don't really get to see what they did, which I think is an unfortunate thing because I would love to see what they did, but I'm sure they did an amazing job, um, really an amazing job. So, uh, but I would also like to see the point breakdown. We're not seeing that yet. So, you know, maybe in the future we'll be able to see a little bit more about, okay, you know, here's where we need to strengthen up. That'd be cool. Um, so there's my story for the day though, but it's super exciting um, to, to come out you know, second out of 23, that's quite a few schools. Um, and each team had at least six, each team had up to six members. And I think all the teams did have six members. So, you know, that that's just amazing. It's amazing. Anyway, um, today's the first day of spring break, which is very exciting. It's Good Friday, um, 2023. And it is, can you see behind me? It is a lovely day here in North Carolina. Actually, I don't generally mind the rain. I don't, you know, as long as it's not flooding anything, we need the rain. Um, this morning, excuse me, this morning we had thunder and lightning and we need the lightning. The lightning repairs our ozone layer. I'm okay with all that. Um, I kind of, sometimes I like rainy days. We just seem to be getting an overabundance of them. But next week during spring break, we're supposed to have a few really nice days and, uh, uh, Big Brit and I plan on taking Little Brit to the beach for a couple of days, for a day, at least a day, maybe two. And um, anyway, so super excited. It's going to be really nice next week. So the Weather Channel says. Um, all right, but right now, let's let's dive into the Dollar Tree and the fabulous things I found. Um, I'm going to start with, I'm just going to actually grab, there's, here, let me show you. This is what I have in front of me. Wait. And there's another bag. So yeah, not a small one. I am going to, I've actually got this big, this bin to put things into as I 
clear them <laughs> from in front of me. Otherwise, I'll be showing you things two or three times. Uh, anyway, I found one of these uh, great um, binders. I only the, the craft ones. I only bought one. I want to see how easy it is to recover. Um, my biggest concern is is right through here, but I have some thoughts about that. Um, so yeah, I really, I really want to see if I can make something like this really special to make some larger recipe journals or some other things. So just one of those, but, uh, but that was an exciting find. I had looked for those in the past, have not been able to see them. Um, oh, I found these. These are super cool. Uh, so these are, um, these are pre, pre, pre click sticks. So the pen contains built-in protection to suppress bacteria growth. So I am sure these came out during COVID to stop us, you know, literally from spreading COVID. Um, but I bought a couple of packs of these and now I'm thinking I should have bought more uh, because COVID's not the only thing out there. Little Brit has been sick so many times, it's not funny. Uh, actually this past week, we got back, my friend Kate will uh, have a little, she'll know a little bit of this. I'm giving her more information now and I'll be uh, sending her a message later today. Um, but, uh, but, Sunday was um, was his big brother's birthday, so we went over to see the new house. We had there's party thing, and um, little Brick got a fever. So way home, he's got a fever. We're thinking it's just the excitement. We had been at King's Dominion the day before. I used to do that when I, you know, after not getting a whole lot of sleep and having a lot of, you know, being outside all day in the sun, um, I would do a fever for a day, and that was fine. Um, so Monday rolls around. He's supposed to have a, do a dentist appointment uh, first thing in the morning. He's hacking up, uh, he's just coughing and he's got a little bit of fever. And so I'm calling the dentist and saying, we have to cancel this one. Second time we've had to cancel because he's been sick because he got sick before his appointment. And now I'm thinking that hole is going to be huge. He had a teeny tiny, they were like, we're just going to feel it. It's not really a cavity by now. Um, so we've rescheduled that one again. Um, knock, you know, knock on wood that he can make it. Uh, anyway, and so, um, so, uh, uh, Big Brett had taken the day off to take him to the dentist. Instead, it was a doctor's visit and he had strep throat. Of course, the Monday before competition. So we were supposed to meet Tuesday and Wednesday the kid with the kids. So he had strep throat. He couldn't come back to school for 24 hours, which means I had to take Tuesday off. Um, Wednesday, he was no longer contagious. And we were like, okay, we're gonna try it. We'll see. Um, he didn't. He didn't make it too long. He wasn't feeling good. I was like, okay, just because I run a media center, just just have a seat. Let me, you know, see what I can work out. And then he was in really bad pain. Um, so I had to cancel the second. So we had to cancel Tuesday's meeting. We canceled Wednesday's meeting. Now I'm thinking, okay, well the kids, you know, I hope they're prepared enough because, um, of course they were. They they did great. And then. Um, <laughs> So then I had to, uh, I rushed him home Wednesday because he was having such bad stomach cramps and it turned out it was just his medicine, uh, which, you know, not just, he was in bad pain, but it was something that we could fix pretty quickly and get rid of the pain. Um, so it just had to, he wasn't having enough food with his medicine or something like that. So, and then by Wednesday morning, he didn't cough at all Wednesday night. He slept through the night. He woke up by, I'm sorry, Thursday. He was able to go to school, do the full competition. He felt fine. He was, thank the Lord. So uh, in the meantime, Kate, I haven't forgotten about you. Um, I am, I'm still pulling fabric for you, but um, that's, that's what was going on. That's kind of took up everything else. So having said that, see, I always have stories within stories within stories for you. <laughs> I'm not that way. These are a great idea because these mean when our kids are exchanging pens and pencils, which they do at school all the time. Oh, can I borrow that? Can I borrow that? Um, if this is actually going to block the germs from transferring, I'll buy a vat of them. Um, anything to keep him from continuing to get sick. So we actually think that this is a continuation of when he started his cough almost a month ago now. And it, this last, uh, the, uh, the amoxicillin seems to be knocking it out finally. Thank, thank goodness. Um, it's not what they gave him the first time. Okay, so I found these adorable stickers. I do not recall seeing these. Maybe they were there before and I just didn't see them. Um, but I think these are wonderful, especially with, you know, summer coming up and I've got some great ideas to use these. 
These are cute. They've got some dimension to them. Love those. Um, talking about summer. Wait, let's switch and talk about Halloween. <laughs> um, I picked it like I said. I'm just grabbing whatever is on top of because it's a lot of stuff. So I found this really adorable Halloween uh, sticker book. This is so cute. It's the sticker by numbers. Um, this is the kind of thing that I like um, putting into some of like my Halloween junk journals, uh, so that when people are going through them, they're finding like all these little hidden treasures. So, you know, they'll find something like this with the stickers that go with it and, um, just really cu cute stuff that, that can be there for adults and kids alike. Um, cause you know, I, I like to do this. Uh, okay. Then I found, um, oh yes, this is really cute. So I found this Despicable Me um, uh, gadget guidebook, and it's really kind of cool because they kind of talk through, you know, as someone who works with STEM and works in technology, um, I, love, I love the concept of inventing. In particular, I work with kids on becoming more creative and inventive and, and thinking about what, do you, what problem do you want to solve next? Um, and so it's one of the reasons why I love Despicable Me. It's not necessarily, you know, he's fun and it's fun, but also the inventions are so creative and interesting. And we want students to think like that. We want them to think, you know, where's the problem? Well, I want to stop people. So I want to freeze them and then a freeze ray. Okay. Kids don't invent a freeze ray. Not unless you have a good use for it. Just saying kids shouldn't be, I mean, I, this is not intended for kids, but if kids end up watching with their parents, I'm just saying, <laughs> um, Oh, he's, he's just so fun. So I picked this up for that. I, I think that I am going to actually take this, um, just it's the techie in me. So, um, I think I'm going to take this and turn it into a, a specialized junk journal. Um, and what that requires is just really reattaching this to a harder, um, chipboard. And then you can still eat the same way that you would do with any other junk journal all of it that way. Um, it also comes with these fun little tattoos. So I was excited about that one and I have plans. I found these cute little uh, Red Riding and Hansel and Gretel. And again, these are not hardcover, but I really like them. They, uh, to me, these are, these have a very interesting, fun feel to them. This is um, Greenbrier. So is it Benton again? Cause that seems to be their new, this is Fidel, P-H-I-D-A-L. Um, so it's not, so Benton had been the one that they were using. I like the, um, illustrations. I'm always looking at the illustrations, just, you know, I like things that I find are pretty. I, um, this Hansel and Gretel book is just adorable. I have not been able to pick out, so it's literally just one signature, but if you've seen my relatively lengthy no i haven't posted it yet so the um the junk journal um tutorial which is in in several pieces is still coming when i loaded it to youtube it got out of order and it's actually been very difficult putting it back in order <laughs> all in all it is several hours long because from beginning to end a junk journal takes several hours um and i also say it never ends but anyway that's coming, but when you see that, you'll see that it's not that difficult to take something that is literally one signature. And if you're not familiar with, with the junk journals and things, a signature is simply um, your set of pages. So this one, because it's folded directly in the middle instead of having, you know, uh, different sections put in, um, this is its single signature right there. Um, so what I will do with these is I will uh, take it apart I will deconstruct it and then reconstruct it so that it has additional signatures so that I can add other pieces to them and in the middle of them. Because like this, I can't really add something to this unless I cut it apart. That's the additional signatures. Um, anyway, so Hansel and Gretel, a Little Red Riding Hood. And again, these are just, they're really, really nicely done. These are made in Malaysia. Um, I'm trying to see, this is the same if they have the, the Philo company uh, or publisher, I am not seeing, <clears throat> oh, okay. This is actually um, produced and published in Quebec 
All rights reserved. They also have a UK company and a Euro, uh, Europe company uh, based in Germany. And the UK company is based in Northamptonshire. In England, when you see S-H-I-R-E, it is not pronounced Shire. It's sure. Something I had to learn from my husband. Just sharing. <laughs> anyway. So these are for future junk journals. I'm always looking for sort of interesting things. Um, I want to take, I'm hoping this summer I can take several days and literally just work on a number of different junk journals at once. I just think that would be a fun time. <laughs> Let me know if you'd like to, if you'd like that to be live and you just kind of want to hang out with me while I'm working on them. Oh, I picked up these books. This is the, purely uh, for reading before Loose Lips Sank Ships, Before Salvage Drives, Before a Little Man Started a Great Big War, There Was Santa Claus. So this is set in World War II. Some of my students just finished a unit on World War II. Um, and I thought that this would be, a, uh, one of these would be a great addition to my media center once I double check it. I always double check for content so that it's appropriate to a middle school, um, which is where I am at. So I will double check this and, and um, for content. Um, I believe it's, it is intended for that time period, or in, I'm sorry, intended for that age, and I'm keeping one for myself, because I just think that this is um, really, really fun. This book was originally, let's see if it's got an price on, $21, $1.25, um, so fun. And then I found this one called Black City. It still has its Walmart sticker on it for fifteen twenty nine. Um, it's a post post a post apocalyptic type book, Romeo and Juliet type relationship. Um, so I'm kind of interested in it. I want to see what it's like, uh, and if it's something that has additional um, parts to it. As I said, the kids all had to read the um, <laughs> Divergent. For this, for this middle school um, project. Uh, and, um, and so uh, Little Brit, who's actually pretty brilliant, um, read that, loved it, and then read, you know, continued to read on, to, to read the whole series. When he likes a series, he really goes through it. And he really liked that one. So I'm going to see if this one is, is something he might want to read. First, I'll view it. Okay. Oh, one bag down. Like the mailman has a package okay uh, hi the mailman uh, all right so then i picked up oh they so they have the mother's day cards out but i had not intended to look for them um i need to send a mother's day card to my mother-in-law and the british mother's day is actually not the same day as the american mother's day did y'all know that i didn't know that until we moved back i mean now that was like 11 years ago or something but uh, but it's not anyway so i found some I'll pick one from this, but I found some that I just really want to journal with. Um, I just thought this one was really pretty. Uh, I really like this. Do not bark. It's just the mailman. It's the dogs again, but at least I am forewarned. There we go. Mailman's already gone. Y'all saw him leave. Dogs are just now reacting. Okay. I just think this is really cute, and I want to fussy cut around it and sort of keep this in. Um, so that one was fun and I found, I really think that this is pretty, um, mom, the older I get, the more I realize how blessed I am that God gave me you. If my mother was still here, I would certainly send this to her because I was quite blessed. Um, but my intention here is actually going to be to, to fussy cut out the middle part and put something different in there. Uh, but it's a beautiful frame and I don't know if you can tell it's sparkly, super cute. the lights oh and then this is just so pretty again if you can see can you see the sparkles very sparkly uh, very easy to to put some additional piece in here from both of us on Mother's Day all the times that um, all that times too because it's from both of us to you have a wonderful Mother's Day um, what can we wish for your Mother's Day? Happiness, lots of it, the heart of the family kind, the surrounded by love kind, the lasting forever kind. We might send that to my mother-in-law. She has a wonderful weather. Oh my goodness. Let me readjust. Y'all know me in this chair. Yes, I have not replaced the chair yet. I know I need to. It's just, it's here and I haven't had any time. 
Um, and then I picked up one of the, and I actually think I've hauled this before. Um, but I saw it and I picked it up because, you know, I I'm going to have another, um, we are edging towards 700. I am really hoping that we start edging quicker towards a thousand because once we reach a thousand, we'll do another giveaway. We've done two giveaways so far. Um, and I've made every attempt to contact the, from what I can do here to contact the winners. Um, neither of them has responded. So I am kind of in a weird place because I did not say ahead of time that I, you know, after a certain amount of time, I would re-gift it to someone else. So please, if you uh, were in on um, either of the giveaways, please go back and check the messages from what, you know, when you message, um, when you made a, a comment, I, I responded in your comment that you were the winner. So, because there's no other way for me to really reach out to you, I can't email you directly. Um, once you, if you see that it's you, um, go ahead and email me uh, and, and we'll make arrangements to actually get you yourself. <laughs> For the future one, I have a different way of doing it. Um, I, there'll be there'll be a, a two prong way, but this will ensure that I have a better uh, ability to to reach out to somebody. How's that? So there we are. Um, anyway, so this is for uh, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure that this is one that will go on a future giveaway. Um, yes, please, please. I really want to give you all these things. I really do. Um. Let's see what's nice. Let me grab another bag. Okay. Oh, this is wonderful. I need this right now. So I did come across some of the um, seashore things. I had seen a few people looking at them. A few people have hauled some of it. Uh, but there's more that I haven't seen anyone uh, touch. And it might just be that they're, you know, not all in the stores. But we had this fan. And I got to tell you guys, they had several different. Oh, that's so good. They had several different um, uh, prints on the fan. And in this day and age, you never know where you're going to be when all of a sudden, okay, that's just me. I never know where I'm going to be when all of a sudden I am struck with heat. So having this available and in the car, in my purse, I could use that. Um, and it, I don't have to have something battery operated. I do try to lessen my footprint as far as that goes. Um, I picked up two pairs of bum socks two pairs of these bum socks. These are men's, um, for, for six to 12. I have a very large foot. It's not fair, but I do. Um, I wear like a size 11, 11 and a half. It's hard to find socks that actually don't women's socks in particular are intended to go up to 10. It's hard to find shoes, which is interesting because, uh, the society is changing and more and more women, um, more and more 20 something, 30 something, uh, we're all getting taller, which makes sense because if you go back to like the, you know, 1800s, women were like four foot or so. I don't know. They were much, much shorter. So were men like five, two, five, um, five, two, five, five. That was tall. I think Jefferson was six foot and he was considered very tall, uh, which in this day and age, six foot's, you know, not uncommon. I think it might be normal for men. Um, so anyway, we get bigger as we get taller, our feet get bigger. So it's a balance issue. Sadly, I'm not that tall. So it doesn't come, uh, you know, I'm just saying, I would love to have a tiny foot, but I don't. Um, so <laughs> if my sisters are watching, it's not fair that you all have size eight and could exchange shoes all your lives. And I come along and I have this humongous foot. Anyway. <laughs> So these are, these are great. And they're Balm, which is a good brand name. So I bought two of these for me and my husband looked at him. He goes, oh, are those for me? No, they are not for you. You, he has millions of socks. I don't know what he does. He, the man eats socks. He gets holes in his socks all the time. Now he works on his feet, but because I, I'm the one who does it, I buy him very nice socks and still full of holes. It, it's honestly something he asks for. For Christmas and his birthday. He always says, look, I really just want socks. And we all accommodate him. Very humorous. Um, little something for Easter coming up. I'll put that over here in the little hidden Easter bag. 
Um, okay, what else do we have in here? Oh, we needed um, new toothbrushes. So I used to be one of those couponers who would just get a million. I didn't, I didn't clear shelves, but I would come close. Um, I would leave some things behind, and if there was somebody else there looking, I would certainly leave enough behind that they wanted. But, um, so having said that, there's a little story. Um, for years, we haven't had to buy toothbrushes, because I bought so many. Toothbrushes and toothpaste, we've had, you know, years. Haven't had to buy it. Soap, shampoo, I have, we had tons of it. So we are finally at the stage where we, we have to start purchasing those things again. Boo-hoo. Um, because I do not want to go back to extreme couponing. It was fun while it lasted. It was fun and it, and it certainly provided us a lot of things, particularly at a time when we needed that those extra funds to go to other things. Um, but it's tremendously time consuming. So um, no thank you. I will continue to do Dollar Tree and pick up these wonderful close up active toothbrushes. I really like these actually. Um, they've got like the nice sort of bend in them. And then I found um, these toothbrushes so I picked up a couple of extra all three of us need new ones and then there's just an extra one in case in case one of the boys decides to eat theirs sometimes Griffin will actually chew on it not as much as he he used to do that when he was younger he's gotten out of that habit thank goodness you know the kids get older but um okay so I don't think I didn't buy any more toothpaste this time around let's see what else we have um I'm like peering into my bag. <laughs> that was a little creepy. I'm sorry. It's the heat. I'm blaming it on the heat. Um, so I found these really pretty uh, napkins. I just thought these were really pretty. There are 14 guest napkins in here for $1.25. Um, so I may use them. I've got some, some um, really pretty seashell junk journals I want to do the, uh, for the summer. Um, using the uh, little golden book. I think it's called Down by the Seashore. Really, really pretty, like the older 50s type looking one. Um, and I actually have several of those. So <clears throat> one of them may end up in a giveaway with some stuff. Um, but but I thought that this would be really fun to include in that and then maybe turn some of it into paper. Um, the Posh Paper Lady has a really good video on taking napkins and turning them into paper. So it's nice. And also that gives you like a bigger piece especially when you're working on um creating albums so okay i got these for the puppies these are the, the little puzzle things so basically you put a treat in here and the dogs have to figure out where the treat is and start to move the pieces around and it's just meant to help keep them sort of um mentally active like all creatures dogs have to stay mentally active and um, when they are you know wild animals that's not so difficult or it's not as difficult because they're out there and they have to stay alive so they have to kind of stay mentally active it's kind of you know you don't want them to get lazy and lose that you know functioning brain just you know so they each have their own because they share very well unless it comes to food they don't share so well um, so we're gonna try those. They, uh, I have in the past, uh, in one of my past videos, uh, they had those those ones that you lick. Um, they love those, and so I'll put some peanut butter on there sometimes, and they just go to town on those. Sophia in particular. Sophia in particular. Cupcake, is, cupcake really thinks that she's a cat, and she's she'll either like it or she won't, and she'll turn her nose up at it and just walk away. That's that's what she's like. I love her. She's like a cat. <laughs> um, so I bought this, uh, this is one of the dish drying mats. And I really wanted to try this one. I love that this is this, this has got the um, seashore. So this would be the back of the mat. And this would of course be the part where I uh, sew on to. Um, so I wanna try one of these. I had bought some of the other ones. I think there's a watermelon one in there and there's a big floral one. And I haven't tried them yet because I've been trying to figure out what, um, thread I want to use because no matter what I use it's going to show this one I think a nice like either a light a blue gray would probably do really well you're still going to see it um, on this side there's no way to you know when you have different colors there's no way to hide that but I think a blue gray would look really nice so I'm going to test one and try it out with some really pretty um, 
uh, fabric strips that I have from Joanne. Um, I also noticed with this one, it is much more square than the other ones that we have. If you, um, if you saw the last video where I, where I sort of, we went through the whole thing. I know it was a long video. You could just, you know, you could certainly fast forward through the, some of the sewing and the other parts of it. But with that one, it was very much not square. <laughs> So if you're a sewer, you know, you, you really do want your edges to be squared, make it nice and even and pretty. Um, that one was very much not square. So we had to square it. Um, these appear to be, but I'll measure them out later. I picked up this pretty ribbon. This is another part of their nautical, and I'm pretty sure they had it last year, but I really like it. Um, I think it's just very attractive, especially as I begin to do some things uh, for summer and with a a little bit of a beach flare to them. I'm not big on the, uh, like the, um, the ship anchors. Um, I don't generally buy a lot in the way of the ship anchors, but things that are very, you know, a little bit more beach themed. I like those because I love the beach. I love the beach. So we've got this pretty, uh, uh seashell, star shell, star seashells. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> just whatever. We've got, this wonderful lighthouse um and i really liked this one life is better at the shore and i think i'm going to use this one in a draw bag uh because then you'll be able to read it better um so yep so i found those sort of in keeping with the um with the three ring binder i picked up two of these they did not these were the only colors they had on top i wish they had other colors but this is more of a cardboard um, and I, so I would, was wanted to see if, if the, um, if the three ring binder works out well, I would make a Mac speaking. It used to be something so easy. I would make a, uh, matching pen. So there's that. Oh, I just thought this was really cute. This little mermaid. So I'm going to make a, um, flip top, um, uh, notebooky thing to that she'll fit inside. I just thought she was really cute. You know, I guess I was going on a bit so to some extent, a little bit with seashore theme. I'm thinking beachy. Um, oh, I was super excited to find these. I've seen several people haul them. Um, and I was very excited to find this body wash. Um, uh, it's made without sulfates, dyes, or parabens, which is really nice. It is says it is lavender. It does not have a strong smell to it, which is okay. I don't need to be, you know, I have perfume I like to wear too. So competing smells are not necessary. Um, but I picked up just two of those. They had quite a few, but I wanted to make sure anybody behind me had a chance to buy them too. Um, and also I want to test it. I want to see if I like it. So I'll let you know. Okay, this was the most amazing find to me. I was super excited about finding, and I know I have not seen anyone show these Crabtree and Evelyn. Um, these are the shower body wash and shower. I don't know what a shower milk is, but we'll try it. Um, I'm sure it's, I'm, I'm guessing it's like a body wash. Uh, I love Crabtree and Evelyn. It, they are a London-based company. They are an expensive company. They are generally, they are not cheap. So each one of these was $1.25, which I thought was perfectly fair. You get um, 1.7 fluid ounces. Um, I have not opened them to see what they smell like yet. Because they've got, see, they even have the nice little internal cover. But let's open one and see if it smells purdy. See if I can even get the thing on. I love, I love. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh, it smells so good to me. Uh, mm. This is the, um, doesn't say, Evelyn Rose. So that one is Evelyn Rose. Let's see what this one smells like. This one is the uh, goat milk and oat, oak, oak, oat, oat, oak. Let's see if those. Oh, it smells like Williamsburg. Oh, Little Bert's going to love that. He loves Williamsburg. We used to go all the time. We haven't been to Williamsburg in a little while, but we should probably go um, do a little uh, weekend trip sometime soon. We used to go to... Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name. There was one hotel in particular we used to go to, and they were amazing. 
they were absolutely amazing and they treated they treated little Brit like gold and um and he got to know miss t and miss jasmine and they were just um if you ever go to williamsburg and i highly suggest it stay on williamsburg property they are amazing and the one i can't believe wood woodlands ah got it okay so it, it's called woodlands um it's it's a beautiful hotel it's very much kind of set in um it's very themey for Williamsburg, which I think is appropriate. If I go to Disney, I really want a Disney theme. If I go to Williamsburg, I really want sort of that Williamsburg type theme. And they have the most amazing water play area for kids. It's got like the, the big pirate ships and the cannons and it's, it's fabulous. You really wouldn't have to go anywhere else. You know, there's lots to Williamsburg. Um, I didn't intend to make a Williamsburg commercial today, but if you go, go to the Woodlands. They have the most amazing staff. They just, they just do. Um, it hasn't been that long. I mean, I, I think it's been like about a year since we've been there. Um, but they, they're, they're just amazing. There you go. So I bought extras of those. And honestly, I wish that I had bought even more. Uh, the Crabtree and Evelyn stuff is just, like I said, it's, it's expensive stuff. It's not cheap. It smells wonderful. It's wonderful quality. Um, I can't say enough about it. Uh, when I lived in Wisconsin, I, I lived in Wisconsin. That's where um, Little Bird's older brother was born. When I lived in Wisconsin, um, there was one on, I think it was called State Street. It was the street that led straight to the, um, like you had the, the university on one side. Because I actually went to one of the universities of Wisconsin when I was li lived there. That's where I got my degree. Um, but you had uh, down straight street, State Street, it led to the Capitol. Good up for me. Um, and that was my first introduction to Crabtree and Evelyn. And you would walk into that store, which is all like different bath and body goods. It smells so good. You just wanted to live there just for the smell. Um, anyway. All right, I'll move on. Um, so I did pick up a few more pieces of fabric. Uh, let me show you what I got. I, I am liking the fabrics that I'm getting at... Um, Dollar Tree, I will say for $1.25, um, you get a nice size fat quarter. And, um, you know, that's that's always good. So this one is very watery, maybe mermaid scales, depends on how you, depends on how you look at it. Really pretty. You know, feeling it, this feels like a good cotton to me. It's, I mean, a decent cotton. Definitely an easy, uh, I, I know that I can quilt with this cotton. Let's see the next one. They may not all be that way. So the next one, you know, when you look at it, you really can't tell what it is. So I picked up a few, again, thought I would give them a shot. We're gonna open them up and see if they're as pretty once you open them, if they have the same quality throughout them. They may not. So this one is pretty, very botanical. I'm, I'm definitely getting a very botanical, maybe, um, vibe off of this one this one has more of a nice um smooth coating i guess you could say this one's a little rough i this one's a little bit rough um it's not thin which is always good in your cotton i think it just has a different finish to it but that one's a little bit rough okay next one this one I did tell y'all it was a long there was there was a lot to see this starfish one is gorgeous again this has a nice smooth finish to it decent quality definitely can quilt with that one then we got this one I just told I just told you guys I'm not fond of the anchors um but I actually bought some of these just thinking I think I have some seashore type um fabrics that will go with the um, dish mat, but if I don't, I can cut these in strips because I don't need anything bigger than this or at least as longer than that. So yeah, these are not bad. Um, I do a lot of Timu hauls. We've got some, some special stuff coming up with them uh, and we'll take a look at what they offer. 
but I, I, I don't see them offering bigger pieces. Like, I mean, like true fat quarter squares. I guess I need to just keep hunting. Um, you know, when I try to pull up fabric, what I, I've seen some, well, that's not, I mean, I've seen some and I, I don't remember the prices on them. I just found one that was 19 by like 60. So that would actually be several fat quarters if you consider it. I'll look back at that one because if that one, I, I need to look back at that one and the pricing of it. Um, because this one, these work out to be about $5 a yard, uh, which isn't bad. That's, that's a pretty good price. I can find it cheaper sometimes. I mean, Hobby Lobby has some deep sales sometimes, guys. Okay, so I just love this one. This is, of course, not nautical, but I just like it. <laughs> I just like that one. So I have three kind of nautical pieces in here. And I thought there was another one. There may be another one in here. I thought I had two more because I was thinking along the lines of, I, I want to make sure I have pieces that I can use with the mat and these match them. Oh, this entire bag is made up of one thing. I have six of these. Can you see that? Okay. It's called sand of my favorite beach. So I bought six of these. Uh, one of my sisters is um, turning just a little more than 30 this year. We'll say that. And uh, she called the other day and said that for her birthday, she is renting a house at the beach and she just wants her sister to come join her for the week. And I thought, that is so super cool. Uh, so I picked these up. She'll probably watch this and know it ahead of time. If not, it'll be a surprise. Um, but I picked these up to share with all of uh, the sisters going on the trip or, or that, you know, hopefully we'll all be on the trip so that we can all add, um, add that. And so that'll be something that goes with us. So there's a bag of six there. I'm just going to pack that up for later on in the year. Okay. Next box. Okay. Oh, I thought so. Okay. See, I didn't even know what was in here. I picked up more of these because I know I'm going to be using them. I also picked up this. This is one of their uh, placemats. Uh, and placemats, I will say, can be just something that's really quick and easy to work with if you want to sew something simple. Um, now, there's a lot I can make out of this. I could make a wallet. I could make a small bag. I could make a little lunch bag. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm not. It's not going to be a placemat for me, but I am going to turn it into something, and I'll let you know when that happens. What did I do with this? Sorry, one second. This is very handy. They had several really pretty ones, pretty beach ones. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Some of you ladies out there know exactly what this is. <laughs> I should have worn, I should, I should have, uh, I just had something else under here so I could change my t-shirt. Um, I found these cute llamas and I actually think I have seen these before, but I just really thought they were cute. Um, not all of them have dimension, but a few of them do. And I just thought those were fun. I don't think I've seen this one. It may very well be out there somewhere. You guys may have seen it, but I thought the unicorn one was cute. I had some thoughts about that because trying to make things that are appealing to larger audiences. Um, I found this beach one. I know I saw this one last year. Um, I don't remember picking it up, but it's super cute. Super cute. So I picked that one up. That one will be fun. I picked up this. Now, I don't necessarily intend on put. Well, maybe I do. We'll see what I do with this one. So this one actually, it's not just a single sticker. Some of them are. This one is basically one, two, three, four, five, like six little stickers in there that could conceivably go onto different containers. And I had thought about putting this into one of my junk journals as a sticker. It will hold really well. Um, but once you put it down, don't expect to ever take it up again. But it just occurred to me, this would be something cool that we could put like next to this so that each of us has something different so it's easy to see who's whose. I think I might put that in there. Wasn't even thinking about that, but now I am. So I picked up some of these fun um, ships. You get uh, six in here. I wanna do some of my Mod Podging with them and make a few more um, ornaments. I did that for Easter, except that that particular Easter event, 
our, our big craft show that I would, there, you know, it happens. You just gotta be prepared. It happens, it's okay. Um, something else for the Easter basket. Just tuck that over here. Little Brit's in the other room. I don't think he can hear me, but he has the most amazing hearing. And I'm very grateful because I actually am hard of hearing. I, you all can't see it, but I actually wear hearing aids. Um, but Little Brit has just, he can hear anything from anywhere around the house. It's scary. <laughs> oh, speaking about ears, I've got, here, I'll, I'll get closer. I've got some new Timu earrings in. Really pretty. Um, this is the last bag, by the way. Okay, so I did find, okay, there's a story with this, and I have to tell you. So I found this um, Star Wars Mandalorian uh, bath bomb. Super fun. It shoots streams of color. Now, Little Brit actually very much enjoys soaking in a nice tub. And he likes bath bombs, although it's hard to find ones that are a little bit more I don't know, masculine for him that he enjoys. So... I come across a whole, you know, they've got those things that are like um, attached on the little hooks that go down and I come across a whole thing of this. And at the top of the hook, it says $4.98. And I'm looking at it going, that looks like a Walmart stag, tick, uh, tag. But have, have they changed again? Are they now interspersing other prices? Because, you know, places do that sometimes. Sometimes they just change something that they're doing and bam. So I took it up to the front and I said, is this actually $1.25 or is this $4.98? She said, it's $1.25. I said, well, this, this tag said it was $4.98. She said, what are you talking about? So, um, so I actually picked up the entire string of whatever that had different ones and I brought it over to her and I said, well, it says $4.98. I just won't, you know, want to be surprised. And she's looking, she says, oh my gosh, how did that even make it onto the floor? So indeed it was, so, so they're supposed to take it off before they ship them. We know that they get things from Walmart. That's where they get some of their stock, which is super cool for us because we get things that, you know, are higher end coming into the Dollar Tree that come from the stores. Um, but she she said, you know, they, it should have been taken off. It wasn't, but it um, it was a dollar twenty five. And um, I said, do you want me to put this back? She says, no, don't put it back. <laughs> we'll keep it up here. And so they, you know, they, they had to fix that. But, um, but that was funny. That was really funny. So on that same one, they had, let me see what else they had in here. I'm trying to show you all those. So I found, I, I picked up extras of those to put, um, for Christmas, to put into some of the Christmas packages. Um, and then I found, isn't that one great? So this was originally $5. Bath bomb, bountiful scent. Um, and this one also does all of these, I think, do these streams of colors. And I am, you know, I'm a, I'm a glutton for stitch. I love stitch. And I, so I found that one and this one. And I will certainly, um, one of those is going to go away for Ashley. Um, I mean, so for my daughter. And, um, you know, the, the other one will go away for like a birthday thing. I mean, a, a Christmas thing. I picked up these cute little um, close pinning things, 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 nautical pins. Um, I thought these would be cute for the the uh, summer that summer junk journal I was talking about, and some more of these to make into additional these these anchors. I, again, these are going to be for um, I will mod podge them and then uh, they'll they'll be for in the next craft fair. I don't remember what my next one is. These are super cute. I really love these, these starfish. I'm they still love starfish. So I thought the starfish were really super, super cute. Okay, I bought this. I do not have a child young enough or a daughter or granddaughter young enough for this, but it was too cute. It was too stinking cute. I could not walk away from it. I don't know why. I thought I'm just gonna get it. I mean, I can always use these for me. I use hair, hair, hair ties all the time. You know, maybe I can use the plain ones to keep. I have this lovely flyaway hair that just likes to never really grow too long, so it always dangles. Funny. Um, I I don't know what I'll do with these. I might take these apart and turn them into um, paper clips for books. But isn't it cute? 
So if you have young children or you like it or I bought the seahorses. Again, the these uh different ones that I that I'm pulling out now, these were definitely from last year too. So these are definitely, you know, something that they've had before. Um, I think that the seahorse is a little plain. I don't know. I might just give him a little paint job. We'll see. I'm not big on painting. Big Brit is. He's, he's amazing, especially with miniature things. He's amazing. Uh, but this may not be something he wants. Oh, no, I just realized. Something horrible happened to this poor thing. It's not. Oh, there it is. It's over here. Aw. He's. It was a terrible day in the ocean. So I found this, and I love the color of the beads. I actually really love these um, uh, pieces. Wow, this must have gotten smashed in the bag because this is broken too. Shoot. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back and get another one because I really like these pieces, and I think dangling off of the spine, these would be really cute with a few of these. I mean, I honestly, you can take this as is, and attach it to the spine of your junk journal and it would be really cute. But this one broke. That's probably what happened to the, to the seahorse that there was just so much stuff and probably the bottles got set on top of it. So mm -hmm. that's a bummer, but uh, it, you know, it's a dollar 25. So we can get another one. Okay, we're winding down. Oh, is it so I bought a, a different one of these. I just think these are marvelous. I really do. Now this seahorse, I think is going to be, let's bring this one out. Uh, the seahorse is gonna be too big for this, but it does give me a few other little ones down here. And the seahorse would be really cute in the junk journal. So those are fun. I'm excited about those now. I was excited about them before. This is it, empty bag. Yay. Um, all right. I did find more, uh, more of the nautical beachy, the beachy. I'm going to call them beachy because I don't think these are really nautical, nautical. These are beachy. Um, so I was excited. The mats normally take eight, two and a half inch, um, strips. What, uh, what I may do is figure out how many of these I have. I think I'm, isn't that pretty with the seahorse right there? And I can center it. I'm going to see nautical pieces um we have one two three four okay so i think i'm gonna have six here's another one like that these are definitely going to be um directional so i've got to pay attention to that when i do my cutting and my sewing look how pretty that is we always go to the outer banks and they have such beautiful lighthouses Again, if you have a chance to go to the Outer Banks, anywhere in the Outer Banks. Okay, so then we have this one. And again, these are hard. I mean, it's hard to know what you're looking at until you can open them up. So you can have to buy them for $1.25. I do like for $1.25 getting so many different options. That's really cute. So I will make some with these fabrics. And I may just decide to um, make my strips slightly bigger so that I don't have to switch out as many. So you can see they're really gonna work nicely together because they're intended to, they're, they're like a line. So um, six of those, I'm gonna do, I'll do the dimensions on them. I'm thinking if I cut them in three inch strips um, and I don't need to make them any longer uh, so I can do, do the, the strips and then they'll be cool. Now, this is something I could make, but I really liked the colors on it. This is it. This is the last thing, this little wristlet. Um, this is, um, you know, it's not cotton. It's um, like waterproofy type stuff. And, um, and I thought this would be nice uh, for when we go back to the beach. Just, it's not going to get, it, it can get wet, I think. Um, it's just made out of a, out of whatever. I don't know what that material is. Um, but this is this is just kind of very cute. It's juncture wristlet. So, um, but with the two little pockets, that's that's. I don't need much more than that. 
<laughs> a little bit of lip balm, a little bit of stuff. Um, that's it. There you go. It was a long haul. There's a lot of stuff here. A lot of things I put over here. Um, but super exciting. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, please, please, please consider subscribing. We are on our way to 1,000 subscribers, which is sort of our first, you know, it'll be the, the, the next, not the first, but it'll be the next big step for me uh, and for Little Brit. And i um, looking forward to getting there with you. That was corny, wasn't it? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be corny. It's sincere. <laughs> I know it probably sounded corny. I'm going to stop a while. I'm a little bit behind. Thank you for being with me today, and I will see you next time. Cheers.